this pandemic has really added another layer of anxiety for everyone, and especially for folks like myself who have compromised mobility and respiratory muscles. So yes, uh, it is a bit terrifying. And I've been in the house for about two months, which is not really that atypical since in the winter, the winter months, I generally waited out because of the fickle weather and climate, especially living here in the Northeast, where one day it'd be slick and rainy, icy, and another day it's dry as a bone and sunny. So I, I'm, I'm used to waiting it out. This layer and level of heightened anxiety and definitely um, is a game changer as it is for everyone. But with disability, it just adds another layer and uh, level of dimension that we have to uh, fold into our, our new normal because this is changing things drastically. How it's impacting me on a daily basis is things like um, delayed grocery delivery and PCA services because it's also affected my personal care attendant who has become sick and has not been able to hang out with me and help me out for close to a month now. So just ways like that um, really put uh, a damper on things and delays things in, in, in you know, um, different ways for people with disabilities. What I'd like people who are non-disabled to know is um, just to try to think beyond the box of self and the single lens. This is the collective lens and a lot of people who, who live with marginalized identities and have high risk factors. Just be mindful of that, um, that you are asymptomatic and you're going around and about your day, but you could in fact be a carrier and infect someone who doesn't have that choice. So be mindful of that and consider it and adhere to all the CDC guidelines. That would be very helpful. And stay home when, you know, um, you know, you're otherwise supposed to and go out only when necessary. So that would be very helpful. Some of the ways that I have been coping with staying indoors even more is that sticking to a routine, getting up in the morning, um, you know, completing my bathroom business and then making my bed. And then I go over to the window, slide it open, take a big gulp of crisp, fresh air. And I find that that helps my mood and my mental health. And I set, it sets the tone for the day. I also work in a little gratitude prayer because I feel like that's important. And when I'm really getting kind of, um, you know, overly anxious or too nervous about what's going on today, I lean on to the sage advice my dad always gave me. Don't worry about things that you cannot control. And I find that that's very helpful because it is out of our hands. And the things that we can control, then do that. Washing your hands, making sure that you're mindful of who's coming in and out, or limiting visitations and things like that. I am grateful that I do have help nearby. My, my, um, my mom and my sister live nearby. My daughter is not that far away from me. And also, even in my own household, it's just me and my partner. So whenever they are, you know, come home from work or whatever, and I need something done, you know, that gets taken care of. So those are things and considerations that keep me at an even keel and... Um, you know, my anxiety at bay. That's important. I just take it day by day because we can get through this. We can get through this together. I can make it through. You can make it through. We can do it together. And we just have to think about that.